Good morning. So I slept well and I'm up a bit, a bit more earlier than a bit earlier than I have been the past few days. And so just to expound what I was talking about, negativity. If you're finding yourself in negativity and it's really difficult to handle, know that it is just where you're at whether other people are influencing you or it's coming from within, you have to recognize this because the only way to work with it and to move through it is to confront it in yourself. Maybe you need to confront it in others, but it's not always necessary. But whatever comes up is always perfect because it's always an opportunity to grow and to move forward. But ultimately, Whatever is appearing on the outside is something stirring in the inside. So there are catalysts in our lives, encounters that we have that are meant to stir that mixing pot within us. Because in order to move forward and to grow, we got to work through the muck. Even if it's icky, sticky, yucky, gooey, we don't like it, we don't want to be bothered with it, we don't want to face it. It's when we face that, the most uncomfortable, the crap that's coming up, that we're going to make the biggest shifts and the biggest movements forward in our life. So never see it as a bad thing. Negativity is just something you have discerned and learned doesn't jive with you and it's not something you want to be, be with even if it's beneficial to you. Negativity is a discomfort within you. It is a part of you. It doesn't make it good or bad. It's just a polarity. It's the other extreme of what you consider positive. And so when you can work with it and you can slowly let go of whatever it is, internal, external, whatever, the more progress you're going to make in your life. Because without that negativity, without that contrast to show you what you prefer, what is more positive, which is more enlivening for you, makes you feel the most vibrant, without it, you wouldn't know what you wanted. So take that in and use that as your catalyst for change. Your reminder that you deserve the best, that you deserve love, that negativity is just there to serve you, to contrast, to show you. Hmm. So have you learned the lessons yet? Time to pack it up and get on the road for breakfast. Ninja's already calling me. He's making sure I'm checked in, I'm sure. 
I gotta go make sure that I am get through security because guess what? Running late to the airport. Hmm, it's, it's a family epidemic. It's called not knowing how much time you're trying to squeeze all that stuff into. Limitations, boundaries, all the, that's wonderful. So inevitably, and I understand, my mom, my mom was similar to this. It's called the trying to pack in too much in a short amount of time and not knowing your true boundaries and limitations and what you're capable of. And there's nothing wrong with being delayed, but knowing if it's a pattern to not beat yourself up or get anxious and upset about it. So I am running late and that's okay. I've got 12 minutes till boarding begins and I'm heading to security now. I have one bag. I have one carry-on luggage and one personal belonging, which is ultimately my laptop bag with my purse. Oh, this is pretty. This is what we're carrying. This is where we're going up the stairs. You have to love this stuff, really. My sister brought me Macro Mamas from the, the farmer's market this morning. So I'm hooked up for lunch. All that pretty lights. Ah, time for our favorite part. Security. I remember the days when I was in the Air Force. So much fun. So, coming through security, I just want to give a heads up. You can still opt out, because I do. And it may seem like quite the hassle, but it's worth it. Because guess what? If you don't opt out, who else is going <laughs> to make changes in this world? And we have enough radiation x-rays, like we're not being microwaved to death here. Come on. Anyway, <laughs> heading to my gate now. And You know you're special when you're being called over the intercom speaker, waiting for last passenger Lana Levante to board this flight to Philadelphia. My sister gave me the hookup and got brought me some macro mamas. chairs over here. This is where I need to be. After so far, oh, I need a relaxation. I need a vacation, I think. All right, so I've got to make my way to Terminal B9 is the gate. And it looks like I need ground transportation. So it seems. Hmm. The joys of travel. Well, I can assure you that travel is not what it used to be in, in the days when I did a lot of traveling, especially when I traveled oh, to Europe. And you know, sometimes I, ooh, coffee anyone? All right, squirrel. I'm in the Philadelphia marketplace, finding my way to gate B. And there's all sorts of nice little things to get you distracted, which is what happens in airports. Ooh, squirrel, let's go shopping, is usually what it turns into. So, in my days of living in Europe and traveling, it just didn't seem so exhausting or confusing or, or, or and cumbersome. So, let's just keep on rolling. Hmm.
Well, check this out. This has been the first time in a long time I've flown through the Philly airport, and apparently this is the terminal nowadays. Talk about technology taking over. Everybody can sit with tablets or iPads, and there are more tables with seating and technology to support than there are seats, it appears. I'm gonna go check on my miles, though made it to our connecting flight and I gotta tell you I really like these new seats this is definitely a new plane I'm excited comfy cozy oh and I was able to upload a recent vlog I love it when that happens in between flights I have arrived yay time to find my ninja out front Actually, I have to take the shuttle before I can even get that far. But, never a dull moment when you're traveling. Ginger, my chariot has arrived, my handsome man. I love you so much. I gotta go see my baby boo. I gotta go see my baby boo. Oh, Let's go see where my buddy's been. How is he doing? Where's that? Oh. 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 Is that my boo? Is that my baby? Is that my baby? Oh, I love bugs. All right, y'all, I'm home. <laughs> home sweet home in my own nice bed. And the ninja surprised me with all sorts of goodies in the fridge and beautiful taking care of the yard and the home and Buddy. Actually, Buddy was watching after him. I had a little conversation with Buddy and I told him, take, keep an eye on Daddy. Make sure you take care of him because, you know, the ninja needs someone to look after him. So, um, it's a little bit of a, a long day travel. Everybody was so beautiful, so kind in the airport and my flights. I, it was all smooth sailing. As I said before, um, I was a little bit flustered for words. But when you go to the airport, don't be afraid to opt out. Because the woman who, who patted me down, actually, you know, the way they teach them to recite and feel you up, grope you, basically, is a good way to try to fear you out of opting out of the scanner, the radiation. It's all your choice. Choose what feels comfortable in the end. Um, I just choose to opt out. If you choose to opt out, don't feel, don't feel like you shouldn't be able to opt out just because of fear and what people think. Because it does. It make, they make a spectacle of you, right? They take you aside a different way. The woman was really, really cool. She's repeating herself. You know, she goes, I know you've probably already been through this, but she, we joked about it afterward. She ran through it like, like clockwork, really, really quick. And I said, see, I appreciate you. 
because you said that so fast. You didn't have to even blink an eye. I said, it's a Northeastern thing. Some of us speak a little fast. And so I could totally keep up with her. And I said, I said it fast so we could appreciate and have a little chuckle and laugh. So um, anyway, yeah, no, everybody was beautiful on the trip. And it was, it was really sweet to catch my ninja picking me up. And he's in the shower right now. Maybe you hear the water running. And I am going to sleep so, so good. Hmm. Seriously. I tell you what, though. I know I've been speaking a lot about negativity and the toxicity of being caught up in our stuff to the point where literally you can't see past it through the observance of others and judging and the inability to be willing to see that everything that's coming up is coming to surface, is triggering you, is upsetting you, is frustrating you, is making you angry, hangry, whatever it is, it's always an opportunity for growth. Because if you can deal with and confront, sit with, acknowledge, and accept responsibility for your own shit, guess what? Shift will happen. Deep shift, if you're willing. And nobody needs to point it out for you, and you don't need to point someone else's out to them. It really boils down to going, wow, I'm witnessing something in someone else. I'm getting triggered or caught off guard by other people what they say, what they do, the environment, the experiences, the engagements that you're having. Recognize that those themselves are things you're un unconsciously, your soul is looking to be triggered so that you can look at it from the perspective of, oh, there's an opportunity here. Now it never feels good when, when it really is like under your skin, when, it, when you've been suppressing it for so long. But when you can really, truly sit with it and go, oh my goodness, this goes deeper. It's not about what this other person has done. It's about where I've been and how I'm still stuck in old patterns and I'm seeing things because that's still there. It's not always easy to see it in the moment. Sometimes we're so miserable, all we want to do is validate our misery by dragging people into it. Sometimes it's easier to just add to the misery, make it worse. You know, when we get destructive, our behaviors, our beliefs, our, our whole little pattern of, well, screw it. I'm already miserable. I've already gone as low as I think I can go. Why not go lower? It's like this whole like self-sabotage. Don't do it if you can help it. But if you've got to do it, maybe that's part of the experience you need to have. Sometimes those this extreme contrast in our lives are what we use that become the catalyst for our deep shift out of our shit. So these are just some things to consider, to look upon. I know for me, um, I found is today there were little things, little hiccups along the way, but I'm, uh, I'm able to look at it and go, wow, I know what that's about. I know where that comes from because I've been there. It's my stuff too. As we say in Beyond Addiction, I am that too. So, as Yogi Bhajan also says, it's one of the five Aquarian Age Sutras, recognize the other person as you. Because anything somebody else is doing, if you like or dislike it, it's part of you too. There is nothing we can technically separate ourselves from because we're all part of each other. And isn't that the irony? We all want our unique, separate identities, but we're unwilling to own the parts of our identities and selves that are also the ones we struggle with accepting in others. So I hope that puts you all to bed on a good note. I'm going to get some sweet dreams. I'm probably going to sleep in. Tell everybody I love them. And Thomas C. says, Everyone, I love you. So... Good night from me, Tommy C, Buddy Boo, and all our trolls. Do you want to name them all off? Anyway. Love you very much. Sweet dreams. Good night.